Have you ever noticed that your ends look thinner or more sparse sometimes? Well, I'm gonna talk through the common causes of this and how to fix it. If you are new to my channel, welcome. My name is Gina and here I make videos all about naturally curly hair. I love doing simplified step-by-step -step tutorial, talking about the science of hair and really helping you problem solve so that everyone can achieve healthier hair. And if you're a returning viewer, thank you so much for coming back to my channel. So let's go ahead and get started. So let's first chat about how to spot if you do have thinner ends and how can you tell. Well, you'll first wanna take a look at your curls and you can even take a look at individual curl clumps. Do they look like they become more narrow as they go down the strand and do they just look thinner at the end? You can also take a look at the back of your head, maybe use a handheld mirror and look in your bathroom mirror or you can even take a photo and look at the hemline of your hair. Do you notice that the ends are more see-through and they look a lot thinner compared to the top section of your hair? And do you experience some of these common symptoms of thin ends such as tangles or maybe your curls fall straight on the ends and the ends just don't hold their curl? You might notice a very stringy appearance that struggles to clump up on the ends and you also might notice a lot more frizz. A lot of times this results in frizz because the hair is not the same length all throughout so you'll get those frizzy pieces sticking out because naturally curly hair bends and turns as it goes down the strand. So if you have shorter hairs, those are going to poke through. So now let's talk about some of the common causes and solutions to fix each one. The main cause of this issue is your hair is not the same length throughout that particular curl clump that you're looking at. So this can be caused by a number of different reasons. And the first most common one and the one that I'm currently experiencing is new growth, hair that has started to grow in. Maybe you were currently experiencing some hair loss or you had some excessive shedding and that new hair that is growing in has not yet reached the full length of the rest of the hair that it's next to. So if you think about how a curl clump forms, it usually groups together with similar hairs that take the same curl shape or the same curl pattern. That's how you actually get that curly ringlet if your hair does spiral. Even if you have wavy hair, you still will usually get those clumps and that's where the hair just groups together. But if you're noticing that there are hairs within that curl clump that are much shorter, your ends are then gonna look a lot more sparse because the end of the hair doesn't have as much hair within that clump to make up the end, if that makes sense. So really the solution for this is you just have to take care of your hair as it grows out and be patient. It's great that your hair is growing in and that you're seeing that new growth, but you're going to have to wait for it to fully grow out to the full length, unless if you chop your hair off right at that line. And we'll get to that. But basically, if your hair is healthy, you just have to wait for that to grow back out. But there are some things that you can do to help encourage your hair growth. I've been talking about these scalp serums for a while now because I'm still using them. I'm still testing them from Curlsmith. These are supposed to help promote hair growth. So this is the full length density elixir. This is a scalp serum that you would use at night and then the scalp stimulating booster. So I've been using this every single morning. You have to stay consistent with it, but they're supposed to help keep your scalp healthy and really promote healthy hair growth. So it's just helping to kind of speed up the process. And I'm noticing a lot more new growth. I have a lot of root frizz because some of those hairs are poking through. And with these, you want to be doing scalp massages, which helps stimulate blood flow. These also contain ingredients that do help stimulate blood flow, but especially at night, you'll really want to take some time upside down to really massage your scalp. And that will just get all the blood flowing to that area to help promote hair growth. Even if you don't have those serums, you can totally still do nightly scalp massages massages, you can use any serum that you have or just use your dry hands, especially if you don't want to be putting like an oil on your scalp, then just use your dry hands and give yourself a nice relaxing scalp massage. By the way, these are not oily at all. This is more of like a water-based serum and it dries pretty quickly. It doesn't leave your hair feeling greasy. And the final solution for this is you'll obviously want to figure out the underlying cause of your hair loss or your hair thinning. If you are seeing a lot of new growth and that's good, that means that it's improving. But as I've talked about in several videos here recently, you have to make sure you're getting to the root cause of the internal conditions that are causing that hair loss. So if you are seeing an excessive amount of hair loss compared to normal, definitely see a doctor so you can get to the root cause because you might have a nutrient deficiency or some type of hormonal issue that is causing the excessive hair loss or even hair loss conditions. So that's the number one most important thing is to treat it internally at the root cause to actually fix hair loss. That way your hair can regrow to the full length of the rest of your hair. So the next common cause is from breakage, whether that be from wearing your hair up too tightly, if you wear your hair up every single day and you're getting some breakage around your hairline or at the crown of your head, 
or this can also be from detangling too rough. Like if you rip through your tangles with a brush in the shower while your hair is wet, that can definitely cause a lot of breakage. So you will see a lot of those shorter hairs all throughout your head, especially in the areas where you're detangling the most. It can be really tough to tell the difference between breakage and new growth, but breakage is actually when the hair becomes damaged and it breaks off. So if you're seeing a split end, if you look very closely, then that's from breakage. Whereas if you're seeing a hair that has like that little bulb at the end and that's from where it was in the follicle, then you know that that hair sheds. So just look very closely at it. See if you see an end that looks like it's split off from the hair or maybe it looks like kind of stretched out and thinner on the end where it broke off and that's how you can tell that it's breakage. Sometimes my hairs, if I do get breakage, they will be very thin on the end, like where it actually snapped off, or it will kind of spiral and be kind of stretched out and funny looking and not look like my regular hair pattern. And that's how I know I had too much tension, maybe when I was brush styling and that piece actually snapped off and kind of shriveled up. So again, it's really hard to tell. You can't have both breakage and new growth at all times. Most people do, so that results in thinner ends overall. So the solution for preventing breakage would be to be much more gentle when you were detangling. I actually recommend dry detangling with a pre poo oil which is basically just a hair oil that you apply to your hair when your hair is dry and then you work through the tangles gradually with your fingers instead of ripping through them with a brush. I always recommend using your fingers wherever possible because then you can really feel the knots and kind of work through them and separate them and just pull the hairs out of the knot instead of just ripping through it with a brush. You can use any oil to do a pre-shampoo treatment. You can also put it on at night before bed and let it soak in before you shampoo your hair. So I like to get rid of all of those tangles before I get in the shower and shampoo because then my hair doesn't get all matted up, especially with all of those loose hairs from my shedding that get stuck within and just cause even more mats in my hair when I'm shampooing. You also want to avoid super tight hairstyles. I recommend using a silk scrunchie. I really like the ones from Curl Friend Collective. I have a discount code I can put down below for you, but those are really nice at keeping your curls up without too much tension because they're much more gentle on the hair. You don't want to be pulling your hair up very tight, especially if you're someone who has to wear your hair up every single day, maybe for your job. You don't want to be having tension around the hairline because that can lead to so much breakage. The next common cause is similar to the last one, but it's actual damage to the hair's cuticle. So damage can occur from using heat tools, like if you straighten or blow dry your hair. It also can come from using too high of heat on your blow dryer and with your diffuser. If you're using a hair dryer that's not exactly designed for naturally curly hair, it might get too hot for your curls. If you're using something like the Dyson, then it definitely gets too hot for your curls. I have a whole hair dryer comparison that I can link for you down below, but I like hair dryers that just use a warm heat and don't get too hot and burn your curls because over time you can get more split ends, which can make them look a lot thinner. This was happening to me back when I was still in that transitioning phase and I had highlighted ends. I was using too high of heat also on my diffuser and my ends were looking it's so thin and scraggly then. You can also experience damage to your hair's cuticle just from regular wear and tear on your hair, like from brushing, as I mentioned before, if you're doing rough detangling, but also from brush styling and just putting tension on your hair overall while it's wet, because as I mentioned before, our hair is weakest when it's wet versus when it's dry. And so brushing your hair while it's wet with a lot of tension brush styling can cause damage to the surface layer of your hair, the hair's cuticle. That's why I mentioned I've been trying to brush style less, but as long as you're using a hairbrush that is designed to not give too much tension and be very smooth on the hair, like my Tangle Teaser brush, and you have products in your hair with slip, it shouldn't be too bad, especially if your hair is a lot healthier, you might not have to worry about it as much. But if your hair is damaged, you definitely don't wanna be putting that tension on the hair, brush styling every single time you wash your hair. So I've been trying to cut back on it, not do it as often, but I love the look of brush styling and the smoothing effect that it has, so it's been really tough for me to completely give it up but I just know that I have to incorporate some protein treatments and some bond building treatments, which I will talk about. So this essentially causes damage to the hair's cuticle. It can actually lift away the cuticle and you can get chips or cracks in the hair's cuticle layer. And this leads to the actual hair diameter reducing and your hair becoming thinner. So if you go and get your hair cut, a lot of times your hairdresser will actually feel where your hair has become a lot thinner. And that's how they know when to cut because they can actually feel it in the hair. A lot of times you will get those those single strand knots on the ends of your hair and that's just because the cuticle is damaged on the end. It's normal 
normal for this to occur, as I mentioned, just from general wear and tear, but especially if you're doing a lot of these things that can make it worse. And also if you're just overdue for a trim, like I mentioned, it's normal and natural for your hair to just gradually reduce in diameter as it gets towards the tip. But if you have gone way too long in between your trims and you're overdue for a trim, then you'll definitely have thinner ends. So the solution for this would be obviously to get a haircut. That's the only way to completely get rid of damage. You have to cut it off. Now your hairdresser should be able to see where that is happening to know where to cut your hair. That's why a lot of times they cut more than you want them to because they can feel where that damage is starting and where those ends are becoming thinner. But you can do this gradually, especially if you are transitioning. That's what I did. I got a haircut like every four to eight weeks and that way I was just getting gradual trim. So I was kind of maintaining my length but I was going very frequently to get a little bit more trimmed off at a time until the damage was completely cut off. But I will say it can be a pain to manage damaged hair. So if you want to just get a big chop, definitely do it because then you will be set and you will be ready to go with your healthy curls. So you'll also want to incorporate some strengthening and some repairing products and treatments that can help repair damage. But as I mentioned, you have to get that damage cut off to fully get rid of it. But if you want to strengthen your hair, especially your healthier hair, or if you have bleached hair or hair that is very heat damaged, you'll want to work in some of these treatments about once a week or a couple times a month. You can try a bond building treatment like the Curlsmith Bond Curl Rehab Salve. This is a product that you use before you shampoo and it helps to repair the broken bonds in your hair. Then you shampoo and you deep condition and you can use this about once a week if your hair is very damaged or less and it just helps to repair weak damaged hair. You can also incorporate a deep conditioner that has protein. That's another great way to get some strengthening products in your routine. This is the Briogeo Don't Despair Deep Conditioning Mask. This is a deep conditioner that contains protein ingredients. So you can rotate with these. If you have damaged hair, you might wanna do this once a week, but if you have overall healthy hair and you're just trying to maintain it, you can do a deep conditioner with protein maybe once a month or twice a month and just rotate between a protein-free mask and then a deep conditioner with protein. And you can also incorporate protein in your styling products. Now people who have very damaged hair, they might want to do both. They would do a weekly deep conditioning treatment or do a bond building treatment and incorporate protein ingredients in their styling products like the Curlsmith Feather Light Protein Cream. That's a really great option that contains protein and that way you can get some of those strengthening ingredients within your routine. I also forgot to mention heat protectant with the last solution and that's something that you'll definitely want to use even if you were just diffusing a heat protectant can really help prevent those split ends and breakage that occur from heat damage. So the next cause that you might not have thought of can actually be from the wrong haircut. If you have too many layers in your hair for your hair's density, the ends can look very thin and sparse. This is something that I really struggle with because I like the look of layers and the volume that it gives on top. But if you have very low density hair and you don't have a ton of hair on your head, your hair is not very thick, it can make the ends look very sparse. Because if you think about it, if you are taking hair like this and you are cutting it up to here, then there's not hair down on this region. So this section is gonna look a lot thinner. Now these are actually some face framing pieces. That's why they are shorter than the rest, but I only have those here in the front. And I kind of like to put them back on top so it looks like I have layers, but I really don't. I just have a cut that is more straight across. It's called a blunt cut and I don't have any layers in my hair. I actually asked for no layers this last time and it was so much better. Whereas the time before I just got a little bit of long layers and I kind of got ahead of myself and thought that I could do it. And my hair was so scraggly as it was growing out and I definitely did not like it as it was growing out. So I definitely need to keep getting that blunt cut, especially as my hair is regrowing. Other common causes are when hairdressers use thinning shears. I highly recommend and never going to a hairdresser that will use thinning shears on your curls. This is probably an older technique. Hopefully people aren't still doing this, but they might be. But if you were trying to maintain thick curls, you would not want to get your hair thinned out because that's taking out the volume within your hair. Also make sure they're not doing a technique called slicing. I don't know that all curly hairstylists or hairstylists do this, but I have had this done one time before. I can't even remember what the particular like hair cutting method was, but I do remember this slicing technique where they basically cut down the hair strand, like down the curl clump to where it's creating these thinner pieces all throughout. And the theory is that it's supposed to help the curl spiral, but in the end it just results in tons of shorter hairs all throughout the hair, especially when you don't have a lot of hold in your hair, those hairs are just gonna stick out and frizz up. I still have a ton of hairs that look like that, but that's usually from the regrowth, like I mentioned, that's so 
still hasn't reached the end of the hair, but you wouldn't want somebody to actually cut that into your hair because then it can be hard to keep those hairs grouped into a curl clump. So as I mentioned, the solution for all of these is to get the right haircut for your hair type. Ask for more of a blunt cut if you do have thin, low density hair like mine. And if you do want to get layers, just know that you might have a little bit thinner ends. But if your hair is very thick and if you have high density hair, then definitely get layers. You will be totally fine. But this is more so for people who have very low density hair like mine. And the next common cause you also might not have thought of, and that is over clumping the curls or perhaps clumping curls that don't belong together when you are styling. So you all know that I love brush styling, as I just mentioned. I've been trying to do it less, but it does really help to define the ringlets. Or you can also do techniques like finger coiling and stuff. But if you are over clumping your hair, no matter what styling technique that you are doing, you might notice that some of those ends look a lot thinner because you might have been grabbing hairs that are shorter or a part of shorter layers into that longer curl, curl clump, which is then resulting in those thinner ends. So the solution for this would be to do smaller sections when you are styling and pay closer attention to the hairs that you're picking up. Perhaps you're picking up maybe hairs from the other side of your head that actually belong on this side of your part. And so then when you're pulling them over, it's a little bit shorter and it's not quite as long. So the goal would be to pick up hairs that are the same length, so that way they don't look so thin at the end. Obviously, you can't be too particular when you're styling. I definitely don't pay attention to this too much. I only really pay attention to this around my hairline. This is where I have a lot of new growth happening. There's a lot of shorter hairs and there's lots of breakage in this area. All of those baby hairs, they really need to be styled a little bit more in detail and with fine-tuned styling because then they're not gonna group together and cause those thinner ends. So I usually will actually separate those out and I'll do a little bit of finger coiling or maybe a little bit of brush styling in these areas. And just separating them out makes it look so much better instead of trying to clump the entire thing into a larger curl clump. However, this will help hide the shorter hairs. That is a technique I've mentioned in the past. If you're looking to kind of tuck away frizz, you can tuck it into a curl clump, but I wouldn't do this on an area where there's a lot of those shorter hairs or else you'll just have like this little puff and then it will go to a stringy end. You can also try techniques like combing through your curl clump. I do that a lot where I will do a chunky brush curl and then I will take a wide tooth comb and just go right through it and that just separates it. And then when you scrunch, you still get those nice to fine ringlets, but they're just smaller ringlets and then you don't have to do as precise styling. You can go a lot quicker and brush style all of your hair much faster. But overall, you don't want to stress about this at all. Like I mentioned, you don't want to be paying too much attention to it to where it's driving you nuts. These are just things that maybe you can try if you are really struggling with this, especially in certain areas where you're noticing it looks very thin and it looks very sparse and see-through. You can try incorporating some of these techniques, but overall, don't stress about it. You don't want to cause too much stress on your hair and too much manipulation, especially if you're trying to grow it out and get healthier curls. And it's super common. Our curls do not have to be perfect. They're never gonna be perfect and it's very common. Everyone has hairs that are always growing in. But if you're like me and you are recovering from hair loss and you're trying to grow your hair, you might notice a lot more of this than usual. You might notice a lot more frizz than usual because most people, they probably don't have quite as many that are growing in at that shorter rate as people who are experiencing that hair loss and they're seeing a lot more of it coming in. So any of these little products that I mentioned and stuff, I will link for you down down below. I'm also going to link you to a playlist that I have that's all about dealing with thin curly hair. So if you have low density curls, if you're dealing with hair loss, if you're dealing with excessive shedding, I've been making lots of videos about that topic. So we'll have a playlist linked for that down below. And if you're struggling with very stringy curls and you're looking for ways to actually clump the hair more, then I will link you to a video right here on the screen that you can watch on how to get juicier curl clumps that aren't too clumped to where you don't have as much volume, but you can really avoid that stringy look. So I will talk to you over there. Bye everyone.